can anyone confirm whether the screen is visible? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, thank you, Dada, for that introduction, and uh, uh, good afternoon to all the uh, participants for this uh, national workshop on research methodology and social sciences. So, today, uh, actually, I was uh, told to uh, share some of my experiences uh, in the area of mixed method research. So, I have just uh, bifurcated uh, sessions into two. One, we will be uh, talking about the, uh, mainly we will be highlighting the future of the mixed method research. It's uh, based on how did it emerge and uh, what are the present, you know, issues related to the mixed method research regarding its applications and uh, the variety of cross-disciplinary issues that mixed method research can address. And in the second session, we will be addressing to certain challenges in uh, data analysis with regard to mixed method research, because mixed method, essentially, it integrates. Um, so that point of integration, the analytical point of integration uh, shall be taken up. And we will see how the analytical protocols have changed over the time. For the last one decade or so, it has changed so rapidly, and we expect it to, you know, change and, uh, you know, go into go into exploring a more complex set of analytical uh, issues in the near future. In the coming, say, five to ten years, you will see uh, more turmoil and turbulence in the field of uh, mixed data analysis. Okay, so uh, let us uh, just quickly take you through this particular presentation. Um, this is not a lecture kind of a thing. I do not uh, want it to be a very monologue or a you know, deliberation coming from a single person. Uh, it can be made interactive, so you can ask me a question. Uh, this is more of a sharing of uh, what we are experiencing in terms of uh, method and methodological approaches in research. So the title uh, remains as Emergence of the Mixed Method Research. So if we look into the genesis of the mixed method research, <clears throat> actually the concept of mixed method, it, it is nothing new. If we, if we simply consider that combination of method is uh, what we essentially say uh, mixed method, uh, combining method, this particular practice is century old. So if we move back to the 20th century, even if we move back to the 19th century, we have examples from the 18th century in, uh, itself that uh, two different kinds of methods have been combined uh, in the research process. So both the qualitative and the quantitative methods were used at random. But what has changed in the fag end of the 1980s, particularly between 1987, 88, 89, and the early part of the 1990s, it got a proper agenda and it got a proper chart. Many social scientists initially, they tried to combine these two methods, but with uh, not much of a logical design in place. So there were uh, no such you know, guidelines or schema or manuals or norms with the help of which a logical framework can be uh, constructed. And since we are combining not only at the methodical level, but prior to the methodical level, we are actually combining the worldviews, the, you know, the paradigms. So it is not only an integration of the paradigms, it is also integration of the philosophical understanding which governs this paradigm. So the epistemological and ontological views are to be you know, viewed in a different way when we are actually combining these two methods all together. So from 1988, 89 onwards, an initiative was taken up by many social scientists from different fields of social science uh, to make a consolidated platform for mixing methods. And they uh, gradually propagated this concept of mixed method research. So in this connection, we can uh, take the names of certain researchers who have made very prominent contributions in the area of mixed method research. And then when uh, this SAGE publication launched the Journal of Journal of Mixed Method Research, this movement has accelerated this particular 
you know, uh, research focus using the mix method as a primary method option for the researchers. It has got a window uh, where the social scientists can showcase uh, their research using this particular method. So we are deeply indebted to people like Alan Bryman, uh, who is basically from the field of sociology. He is from United Kingdom. We are indebted to John Cresswell. He is from the United States. He is from the field of educational psychology. Uh, then Jennifer Greens. These are some of the researchers you will come across again and again, and you will come across their contributions, the initial foundation that they have made uh, in, in consolidating the mixed method uh, research process. So Jennifer Green is again from the USA. He is also an educational psychologist. Uh, then we have uh, Janice Morse. Uh, he, she is from the USA. Uh, she is basically from the nursing and anthropology uh, discipline. And then we have Nigel Fielding. Lots of researchers have contributed, and they are richly contributing. John Wenig Busi, uh, sorry, Anthony Onwek Busi, John Hitchcock. They, they, they are the two most prominent contributors in the field of mixed method research. Uh, we have Michael Fallon. Uh, we have Anna Farmaki, we have Amy Dellinger. So these, these are the researchers who have contributed a lot. So from the 1990s onwards, if you see the growth of the mixed method research, and if I make a very graphical presentation of that, you see, uh, this, is, this, this is a plot of the fraction of the total papers or research papers or research articles which mentioned uh, mixed method research and which appeared in a time period between 1990s from when the mixed method research as a consolidated uh, method in the research technique has been adopted till 2017. Now, if you see from 2006, 2007 onwards, there has been an exponential growth in the application of the mixed method. And if you see the good journals the, today, if you see, if you go for the you know, Thomson Reuters, uh, Web of Science Index Journal, or Scopus Index Journal, or, or if you see the ABDC Enlisted Journal, you will find most of the journals which are actually showcasing the you know papers or research uh, pertaining to the field of social science. There is a growing you know application in the field of mixed method application, mixed method research. So it, it, the, there has been an exponential. I will explain why this exponential growth has taken place, and particularly after 2014, 2015. Uh, this growth is incredible. This growth has almost vertically taken off. And uh, in 2022, 23, 20, um, uh, 21, 22, 23, we have seen a um, huge amount of you know, research which are using the mixed method technique. I can give you a site one example. Like we are uh, finding a lot of research uh, taking place focusing on the social media. So if I take that particular example, you can see uh this is this is uh you know excerpt taken from one of the papers written by snelson in the year 2016 and it appeared in the journal of you know uh international journal of qualitative methods which is a sage publication the name of the paper is uh, qualitative and mixed methods in social media research uh, that was a review of literature and you can see the different types of you know social media uh that has been using uh, this mixed method research. But what is interesting about this particular graph, uh, when Snelson uh, elaborated that what he actually found, over here you will find that when he plotted the traditional or the conventional qualitative approaches versus the mixed methods over that period of uh, time, what uh, he found that the number of studies which used the traditional or the conventional uh, qualitative study, like, you, you know, we approach the qualitative study with the help of case study analysis or ethnographical approach, or we use the grounded theory, we use, you know, phenomenology. If you compare the number of papers which are citing this kind of usage of qualitative method vis-a-vis uh, -vis the mixed methods, you see the numbers, uh, it has grown phenomenally. So comparing the case study, ethnography, grounded theory, phenomenology, and dramaturgy, ethnometodology, all other techniques which we use in qualitative uh, study, 
uh, comparing those uh, techniques, uh, you know, the application of mixed method as is really emerging as as a third, you know, methodological or methodical uh, approach. And if I if I uh, take a look into what Snelson has uh, tabulated in the form of data collection techniques and the analytical approaches, you can see. Uh, in case of the data collection techniques, all the field work observation of the FGI, the focus group interviews, or the scheduled interviews, or in-depth interviews, the survey, mainly for the quantitative study. And since he was studying the social media, uh, he came across uh, the concept of big data or the unstructured data. And if you see uh, the application of these data collection techniques in mixed method, all the boxes have been checked. That means in the mixed methods, you are getting a provision to integrate all these different kinds of data collection techniques. So you do not have to depend on or you do not have to focus on a single collection process. So the integration point of integration at the collection data collection technique is also being observed over the last few years. Even in case of analytical approaches, we see a lot of codification when we go for uh, qualitative data analysis, uh, we go for discourse analysis, we go for content analysis, we go for thematic analysis, thematic content analysis. And in case of the quantitative data, we go for the statistical analysis. So in, in case of a mixed method, you see all these analytical integration is also possible. But I will just uh, stop here with regard to the integration of the analytical process, because this is one of the issues uh, that kept uh, the mixed method researchers facing certain problems till the year 2015. So from 2015 onwards, the point of integration, particularly from the analytical uh, perspective or from the analytical point of view, it took almost a U-turn when we got the DSI concept, the data structure interoperability, which we will discuss. And it completely changed the way we approach the data now. We, it, completely, it completely changed the way we approach the kind of data, irrespective of its structure, and the kind of you know uh, analytical uh, solution uh, that we try to apply on those uh, particular data. So, as far as the analytical approaches are concerned, what we are seeing now and what we are expecting in the near future that the mixed method will play a big role uh, in showcasing uh, these uh, these kind of data analysis, the mixed data analysis. So the point of integration will be at least at the analytical level. Uh, what are the paradigmatic stances to research that are compatible with the mixed method? So we had basically, you know, in the 19th century, throughout the 19th century, we saw or we, we witnessed actually a war between the paradigms, which, which you know, emerged into its height of conflict in the 20th century. The war between the, uh, between the positivists and the post-positivists and the constructivists and the, or the interpretivists. So the positivists or the post-positivists are always considered that their uh, research outputs or their research standards or their research protocols are always superior compared to that of you know a constructivist or an interpretivist in the sense that the post-positivists and the positivists they boast about uh, scientific rationality, the scientific reason, the scientific context of their entire research. So they said that. The research output which is coming out of positivism that is more generalize, generalizable uh, it, it is transferable so if we are working on a small sample it can be generalized over a large population so extrapolation can be ensured and what more they said that this transferability of results since there is there can be generalizability uh, the researchers biasness is somewhat neutralized so researchers are not biased and the entire analytical process is, you know, it is highly parameter bound. So we are applying formulas, we are applying, you know, theories, tested scientific theories. Uh, we are uh, applying the statistical norms and the numerical models, et cetera, which are so scientific and rational in nature. So what they are saying that whatever output a positivism uh, kind of a research is churning out, that is more scientifically acceptable and generalizable over a wide wider population uh, in the in contrary to this the positivists said that 
whatever techniques the interpretivists or the constructivists are approaching with, uh, it is more or less very judgmental in nature. So they they were very suspicious about uh, whether in these kind of you know approaches, researchers' biasness can be neutralized or nullified to a certain extent or negated to a certain extent or not. They thought that whatever conclusion is drawn, whatever inferences are drawn on the basis of data, which is very subjective, which is at times very abstract in nature, most of them are textual, and in certain cases, they can be image representations, video representations, etc., which are very unstructured uh, data. It, it, it's very difficult to interpret, and it is very difficult to standardize also. So if, if you say, for example, uh, in case of uh, uh, you know a positivism uh, kind of an approach or under a uh, positivistic kind of a research approach if i allow say uh, 10 researchers to compute what will be 2 plus 2 everyone will come out with a single answer it will be 4 so it, it is so much guided by you know scientific uh, reason or uh, the mathematical formulation or numerical regulations or statistical rules and norms etc that it will be very difficult for yeah it can be represented in a different various ways uh, say for example if somebody writes 2 plus 2 is equal to square root of 16 it is also correct but the ultimate result it, it, it's a 4 but if I give an interview transcript, the same interview transcript, say it contains five questions, open-ended question, and the respondent or the research participants came out with answers, uh, which are textual in nature, which have been transcripted. And if I distribute that transcript to the researchers, say 10 researchers, the 10 researchers will, may come out with 10 different kind of interpretations because each will try to contextualize those transcripts in their own way. They will try to interpret. They will try to dig out the meanings on the basis of the words and phrases of those uh, transcripts in their own way. And uh, the application of the intellect, it will come through. The ability to actually link uh, the transcripts with their immediate socio-environmental world, uh, the phenomena that has been taken into consideration to set up, set up that research process, et cetera, will come through and they will be interlinked with each other. So we got two different kind of research approaches. One is which is very deductive in nature. In the first case, the positivists move through the deductive kind of research. So they are more interested in testing the theories they are more interested in testing the working hypothesis they are more interested in testing the models more interested in testing the frameworks whereas in an inductive kind of a research which are mainly the prerogative of the constructivists and the interpretivists they are more interested in developing a theory they are more interested in developing a working hypothesis they are more interested in 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 proposing a new framework to develop a new model which can further be empirically tested with the help of quantitative research. So, you know, as far as the paradigmatic stances are concerned, we found one particular paradigm apart from the positivism and interpretivism or constructivism, one particular group of researchers who followed pragmatism. Now, pragmatists are those group of researchers who feel uh, who, who actually conceptualize research as like the horses for the courses. So, so they understand the research in a certain way. And depending on the problem formulation, depending on the kind of research questions that uh, needs to be answered, uh, depending on the research objective, depending uh, on the kind of epistemological connect with the ontological perspective of the research, they decide to select the particular method which will best address the research problem, that will best find a solution to the research problem, and that will best find answers to the uh, research questions, and they will, uh, you know, achieve the objectives that have been set by the researchers. So pragmatism, the pragmatists were the first group of people or the first group of researchers that jumped onto this mixed method. So during the 1990s, uh, through the 1990s and early part of the new century in the 21st century, early part of the 21st century, what we saw that most of the pragmatists have switched over from a mono method uh, to this mixed method.
so they 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 had certain confusions about which which emerged from the mono method biasness and to get rid of this particular biasness and to give their research a more of a holistic view rather than a very atomistic kind of a view they shifted from a mono method application or mono method adaptation to a mixed method so pragmatism is one of the uh, you know uh, paradigm paradigmatic position uh, which adopted the mixed method uh, approaches in a big time. Then we have the dialectical pluralism, uh, which has adopted mixed methods. And we are seeing the dialectical pluralists uh, adopting the mixed method. We have critical realists and the realists who have adopted this mixed method. In the field of social work and sociology, sociology we see a lot of uh, participatory research work. So in the transformative, emancipatory kind of research work, a lot of participatory research work is taking place where the application of mixed method research is also seen. And it will be continued to seen in the near future. So these are the paradigmatic stances to research that are more or less compatible with the mixed methods. And we are seeing the new uh, paradigms which are emerging also uh, that are using mixed methods. So we can come to our definition of a mixed method research. Interestingly, you know, mixed method has been positioned both as a method as an, and as a methodology for conducting research uh, that involves collecting, analyzing, and integrating the quantitative and qualitative research in a single study or a longitudinal program of inquiry. So this is more or less a bookish definition. But we have a practical understanding that mixed method research combines two different methods logically. So there must be multiple points of integration. So there will be integration at the uh, methodical level, paradigmatic level, philosophical level, methodological level, data collection. When I say methodological level, it includes the uh, point of integration at the data collection level, sampling level, analytical level, and inferential level. Uh, but there are certain dichotomy challenges which a mixed method researcher faces with. The first one is, is it's uh, ideographic versus nomothetic in nature. You know, you, if we go with an ideographic approach, we are concentrating on, a, you know, on, on singularity. That means an individual uh, person, an ind individual group or a specific group. But when we go for a very nomothetic kind of a research, we tend to generalize a lot. So it, it, it is it is spread over a larger population. Atomistic versus holistic, you know, quantitative research essentially are very atomistic in nature. You know, one of the fundamental differences between the quantitative and qualitative research is the quantitative research is essentially a reductionist kind of an approach. You, you reduce, you concise, you filter and you try to bring the data at a very atomistic level which will be very easy to interpret, very easy and very scientific uh, in interpretation. So you apply the statistical processes, the numerical modeling, et cetera, et cetera. And then you concise the data for easy interpretation. Whereas uh, in case of a qualitative uh, data analysis, you become more holistic, you expand on the data. So uh, when a researcher is asking a question to the research participant or uh, respondent, uh, he or she may come out with a one word or a two words answer. Now, the task of the researcher will be to expand on that particular answer and how well uh, the researcher uh, can expand logically that particular answer and how well the researcher is in a position to uh, contextualize that particular reply. Even a single word reply can be expanded into a whole paragraph. So it will be much more holistic. It digs out the hidden meaning, the untold things, the unmanifested issues uh, in, in, in all those narratives. So it is much more holistic. It is much more expansive compared to uh, the reductionist approach that we see in the quantitative technique. Empiricism versus phenomenological. In, in case of a qualitative study, we, we, we use this phenomenological study a lot, whereas in the quantitative studies, we, we look forward for the empirical studies. We go for hypothesis uh, testing versus, you know, speculative, illustrative kind of a thing. Again, the uh, challenge between how to bridge between these two approaches. One is a pure 
you know, positivistic kind of an approach. The second one is an interpretivistic or a constructivistic kind of an approach. So these these dichotomy challenges are there. And overall, the overall approach, you know, deductive versus inductive, one tests the theory and the hypothesis, one helps you in developing a new theory, developing a new hypothesis, developing new framework, and developing new models. So there must be certain purpose of mixing because when we are going uh, to use the mixed method research, one must be absolutely sure that uh, what we are actually trying to achieve by virtue of mixing two different methods. And when I told that uh, in the 19th century also, or in the 20th century, early part of the 20th century, when we saw uh, researchers combining two different methods, both the qualitative and the quantitative method in a single study, they are actually combining it without much logical sense, without much understanding about why they are actually using it, you know, indiscriminately, why they are, why they are actually using it in combination with each other. So the, there was a, not a big, uh, you know, uh, it, it was not very chartered, it was not very regimented, okay? But nowadays, when when a researcher uh, asks for should I go for a mixed method application or should I approach uh, my research with a mixed method kind of a thing, uh, then as a supervisor or as a teacher, the immediately certain question will be uh, placed in front of the researchers that what is the purpose of this particular mixing? Why a researcher feel that uh, mixing is essential? So if we look at uh, the purposes of mixing, there are several viewpoints because a lot of social scientists, as I have told you, like Jennifer Green or Alan Priman, uh, Nigel Felding, they have come out uh, from time to time different uh, sets of logic, different sets of reasons. But if I combine all those things, they come out with uh, five different uh, purposes. The first purpose is a process which is called uh, triangulation. Now, triangulation, it seeks convergence, uh, it seeks correspondence of results from different methods. Uh, so that's basically if, if my objective is to achieve triangulation that will correspond, that will combine results from different methods to give us a better understanding of the phenomena in the study, then we can adopt this particular uh, mixed method approach in my research. The second one is complementarity. Uh, complementarity basically seeks elaboration. It offers much more clarity. It offers explanation. Uh, it illustrates. It offers, as I have said, clarification of the results from one particular kind of a study, uh, which may lead to another particular uh, study, or it explains the results of one particular study based on the results of other study. And if complementarity is what we are looking for or what a researcher is looking for, uh, then probably mixed method research will be the uh, better option. Uh, then we have development. Uh, it basically uh, seeks uh, to understand the result from different perspectives. Say the result of one particular method will develop something for the other method. Suppose uh, in case of uh, scale development, particularly survey instrument development, these days what we do, we start normally with a qualitative study. If the scale is non-existential, you know, if the scale doesn't exist, uh, suppose uh, if I want to measure the emotion or say introvertness or extrovertness of a particular person or say uh, anything, any uh, issue that I want to measure, if I do not find an uh, existing instrument or an existing scale, and if I want to de develop a new scale, the researchers are advised to go for the qualitative study to generate the scale item um, by deploying an in-depth interview with the experts, academicians, different kind of people, the people who are most relevant in that particular perspective, or they can conduct an FGI, the focus group interview, or key informant inter interviews where uh, they can find out some very important inputs uh, for the development of the scale items. So qualitative study will develop a battery, a pool of you know, scale items, which can further be uh, taken up for refinement and validation through the quantitative research. And once it is taken through the quantitative research, 
now it can be validated as uh, you know reliable instrument for with the help of which we can conduct for the survey now when we are uh, using this kind of an approach that means when our objective is to develop something and develop a model a develop a framework develop a scale uh, develop a survey instrument there also a uh, combination of two methods qualitative and quantitative uh, is is justified <clears throat> uh the fourth one is initiation you know initiation basically seeks to discover the contradictions okay basically if if one you know in in case of a mixed method uh you you you, you should not always expect a very converging kind of a result there can be divergent results also okay so how to justify those divergent results initiation looks for these contradictions initiation if your objective is to identify whether there are certain divergent results coming out of the application of two different methods and what is the reason for these divergence can i explain this particular divergence uh, from different theoretical point of view or from different is it a real divergent or is it a is it a divergence that simply creeps into the study as a result of using two different methods or sometimes you know initiation can be used to recast an existing set of question an existing set of you know protocols existing set of you know uh, a scale items if i want to recast it if i want to modify it if i want to change it then this uh, particular initiation uh, rationality behind application of the mixed method can take place and last one is the expansion uh, expansion basically it uh, seeks to increase the length and breadth of the inquiry system so if i want to make my inquiry more versatile more robust in nature i can go for the mixed method basically the uh, you know fundamental logic of using a mixed method is if a researcher believe that a single method application won't be fetching the best possible solution to the research problem and won't be uh, you know fetching the best possible answers to the research questions and won't be achieving the research objectives as set by the researcher then obviously he or she will be looking for combining these two methods if the researcher believes that combination of the methods will provide the best solution for the research problem and best answer the research question only then uh, you know uh, the mixed method research can be adopted and the purpose for the mixing can either of these five we 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 had a next set of you know uh, logic which was uh, proposed by Bryman Alan Bryman uh, he also issued a certain uh, logic for which uh, you know the mixed methods can be used like credibility the context of application, illustration, the utility value of mixing the methods, confirmation and discovering of the new uh, things, diversity of the views. Uh, these are some of the areas that uh, Bryman also, Alan Bryman classified. But more or less, you know, uh, the standard uh, reasons are this, or the standard logic uh, for applying or using or adopting the mixed method is the triangulation looking for complementarity in the results, uh, developing something new, uh, initiation, finding out the contradictions and the, uh, you know, recasting of the questions, recasting of the instruments, etc., or new perspective of the frameworks. If there are certain, you can say, paradoxes associated with the uh, method, all those things uh, comes under this initiation clause. And if I want to make my uh, inquiry system more robust, more versatile, I can use it with the logic of expansion. That means I want to expand the length, breadth, and the depth of my inquiry system to make it more robust. Okay. Now, uh, while talking about this mixed method, we have seen that uh, over the course of time, several researchers have come out with uh, dimensional understanding so many social scientists have um, they came out with uh, uh, this uh, uh, primary dimensions of mixed method and secondary dimensions of mixed method so let us just uh, take a look into the primary dimensions and the secondary dimensions 
uh, the first of the primary dimensions uh, that was uh, uh, you know uh, considered is called a theoretical drive so let us understand the theoretical drive so when designing a mixed method study it is occasionally helpful to list the theoretical drive in the title of the study design now the question is what is a theoretical drive now what morse and Newha said that uh, a investigation or a research it focuses primarily on either an exploration and description kind of a thing which is basically a qualitative kind of an attempt or qualitative kind of a study uh, which uses this particular paradigm constructivism or interpretive interpretivism or it is a testing and prediction kind of a thing which is which is using more statistical technique more you know numerical procedures and it is more uh, deductive in nature and more positivistic it relies on the positivistic uh, paradigm and more quantitative in nature so what morse and Niehaus recommended that while mixing two methods, qualitative and quantitative, uh, most of the researchers, they tend to emphasize and prioritize on a particular method. And that particular method becomes the core method. And the other method, which has been used as a supplemental method, tends to be the non-core one. So in, in the process of research, if a researcher is adopting two different methods, qualitative and the quantitative method, the researcher tends to emphasize and prioritize one, say, for example, qualitative or quantitative. And the other method is used as a supplemental method to the core method. OK, now, according to Morse and Niehaus, the theoretical drive is related to the core method. That means the method which has been prioritized by the researcher, OK? And Morse and Niehaus came out with certain notation, uh, notations also for the mixed method research. In the mixed method research, if you go through the papers, particularly the papers we, which have concentrated on the literature review, you will find uh, there are certain specific kind of notations. Some notations are used in upper cases. Some notations are used in lower cases then there are certain symbolic representations of uh, you know using the plus sign or the arrow sign these are the notations which have been devised by the morse and Niehaus. and if a particular uh, you know uh, method is represented with all the uppercase letter that means that is the method which has been prioritized by the researcher that means if i say uh, if i if i represent a sequential uh, design of a mixed method application in this way, uh, whereby the QUAL, that's the qualitative method, uh, you know, represented with this particular abbreviation. As you can see, the QUAL, uh, this particular abbreviation has been written by using all the upper cases, and QUAN, the quantitative part, have been represented by using all the lower cases. If I use this particular notation or if a researcher use this particular notation, what does it signify? It signifies that qualitative method is the theoretical drive for this mixed method application. And the quantitative method is basically the supplemental to the qualitative uh, method. So qualitative method is the core in this case and quantitative method is the uh, supplemental in this particular case. So a theoretical drive basically refers uh, to the core one. That means the, the method that has been prioritized. But you see, uh, this particular you know theory of Morse and Niehaus, uh, it drew criticism. Okay, it drew criticism um, basically from this uh, uh, concept of theoretical drive because when you know morse and Niehaus is saying that uh, when when they are actually segregating between a core method and a supplemental method what morse and Niehaus has said they said that the core method must be performed in an extremely rigorous manner and such will be the rigor so that the core method is in a position to stand on its own okay so in this case, if qualitative method is the core method or the qualitative method is the prioritized method by the researcher, 
the qualitative method should be applied or should be adopted with every possible you know uh, rigor in every possible uh, following every possible norm complying with every possible norm of the qualitative method okay and this qualitative method in itself should be able to justify this entire research you know issue that 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 has been taken up by this researcher for addressing whereas in case of the supplemental uh, method, in this case, the quantitative method, which has been used for supplemental method, what Morrison Niehaus has said, that quantitative method over here, which is the supplemental method, or in general, the supplemental uh, part, it does not have the obligation to stand on its own. And it may be taken up with a less rigor, or that means, uh, it may drop out some of the uh, criteria uh, for application. It may it may drop out some of the uh, compliance issue. It may it may go loose on some of the compliance issues, etc. So the first criticism came over here uh, for this particular core and supplemental kind of thing is when Morrison Niehaus is saying that the supplemental method does not require to stand on its own and does not require to follow a very strong regimented process. That means the norms, well-documented do norms may not be followed. Then they did not specifically say that on which ground of rigor this supplemental process may be little loose. So it was a very gray area, very opaque area or unexplained uh, area. So the criticism was uh, drawn from that particular end. And the second one, what Jennifer Green stated that uh, one of the logic of using a mixed method research is we will be, uh, you know, offering equal status to each of these two mono methods because our primary understanding about adopting a mixed method research with regard to a particular research problem is so as a, as a researcher, if, if I'm supposed to apply a mixed method, uh, adopt a particular mixed method research, my uh, justification will be that my research problem has been designed with such complexity that a single method application won't be able to justify and find out the best possible solution to this research problem. So on the ground of that particular rationality or on the basis of that particular logic, what am I assigning to these two mono methods is an equal status. That to to address my research problem to find out answers to my research question i need to provide equal impetus to the qualitative method as well as to the uh, quantitative method so green's equal status mixed method research or the interactive mixed method research that, that as was proposed by jennifer green that also contradicted the morse and nuances uh, you know concept of theoretical drive so this concept of theoretical drive uh, has received criticism, but we cannot say that it has been ousted. That means people do not follow it. Yes, in, in several uh, research papers, which is uh, published uh, regularly, and even now, if you go through certain research papers that have been published in 2023 also, you will find these kind of notations. Uh, OK, someone is in uppercase, someone is in lowercase that means the theoretical drive concept have been used so if i represent something in uppercase that is the core one and representing something in some some method in a lower case represent the supplemental one so although theoretical drive concept have been criticized by several social scientists uh, by or several researchers um it is in use it, it is still in use because it, it as i have told you that mixed method it is still going through a, a lot of you know uh, initial uh, you can say processes we are yet to get a certain norms rules regulations charters regimen to to actually you know follow the mixed method research it is still at the experimental level and we will see a lot of changes before it consolidates on a certain given charter uh, the next one is the timing uh, the timing takes into consideration simultaneity and dependence <clears throat> Okay, so when we say simultaneity, uh, we come across two different kinds of researchers. Uh, one is called, or two different kind of research design. One is called the sequential research design, 
one is called the concurrent research design so if it is a concurrent research design that means we are deploying the two methods qualitative and quantitative simultaneously concurrently okay but if we are going for sequential research design uh, mix method uh, sequential mix method design that means one particular method will follow the other or we can say uh, that the results or the findings of one particular method will determine how the other method will pan out okay so in case of simultaneity what is the implication because the principle of simultaneity will imply the fundamental uh, design of the mixed method study whether it will be a sequential study whether it will be a uh, concurrent study whether it will be a sequential embedded study or whether it will be a con concurrent embedded study that will be determined by the simultaneity principle and dependence dependence basically comes from the second part of simultaneity which talks about the sequentiality that means if it is a sequential design the sequentiality comes of, um, you know it 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 uh, throws the notion of dependence that means a particular researcher can conduct both the qualitative and the quantitative method or can deploy both the qualitative and the quantitative quantitative method independent of each other so the researcher sets out with an objective that i will test this particular part of my study with qualitative approach i will test or approach this particular part of my study with quantitative approach and at the inferential level or the interpretational level, I will churn out the output and then I will try to amalgamate those or mask those. But the, the, this is an example of independent application of both these two mono methods. But in certain cases or in most of the cases, as we are now seeing, that there is a dependence between these two methods. So one is leading to the other. That means the result of one particular method is leading to the execution of the other method. Suppose, as I have given you the example of the development of a particular scale or development of a particular survey instrument, how we start with the qualitative uh, you know, method, um, finalize the scale item, uh, after finalization of the scale item, we go for, you know, the content validation. We have several techniques of content validation these days. We go for inter-rater reliability. We go for inter-coder reliability. So uh, once we subjectively and qualitatively assess and validate the content of the scale, then we take it forward for their, uh, you know, further validation or, uh, you know, measurement validation. Uh, we can use it in the survey instrument to collect the scale data and then we can go for so you know in, in case of a dependence obviously the sequential design uh, in the mixed method is highlighted uh, next is the point of integration yes this is one of the most important and one of the most controversial and the most complex uh, issue in 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 mixed method the point of integration because the entire you know uh, domain of mixed method is uh, the issue of this particular integration so when we talk about integration uh, from integration can be conceptualized from the point of view of uh, merging of the two data sets or connecting from the analysis of one set of data to the collection of a second set of data or it can be conceptualized from embedding of one form of data within a larger design or procedure, or using a framework or a theoretical or a program to bind together the data sets. Okay, so the point of integration when we talk, uh, it integrates not only the data set, uh, because when we are referring to the analytical level, uh, there can be an analytical integration when we are referring to the methodical level and uh, integration of two methods. We are uh, talking about uh, integration of two paradigms. We are talking about integration of inferences. We are talking about in integration of data collection techniques. So there are multiple uh, point of integration. So if you if you can go through this particular uh, paper, which has been uh, written by Chomba, Josephine Chomba in 2013, it appeared in Advances in Social Work, volume 14, number two. Uh, the name of the paper is the use and value of mixed method research in social work 
Now, the, in this particular uh, paper, uh, what uh, Josephine Chomba uh, said that there can be three possible points of integrations, okay, at the design level, at the data collection level, at the interpretational and the inferential level. So there are three levels where this integration can be done. But you see, interestingly, this came out in the year 2013. There is no mention of integration at the analytical level. Okay, so at the design level, yes, she has pointed out. At the data collection level, it has been pointed out. At the interpretational and the inferential level, it has been pointed out. But nothing has been mentioned as far as the analysis or analytical integration is concerned. So what Chomba did, she went for a, a systematic literature review by using that PRISMA model, PRISMA, which we now use for the literature review, apart from the meta-analysis that we often use for literature review. So she uh, actually um, identified uh, 585 research papers uh, from the EBSCO uh, database, 585 research papers which mentioned mixed method research in their paper. Okay, so the primary uh, searching term that was used by Chomba was application of the mixed method research, which churned out 585 research papers. And out of those 585 research paper, on further examination, uh, the researcher found, Chomba found, that only 119 can be accessed as far as the full research paper is concerned. The other research papers were available only in abstract form. So she did not get the access. So uh, it was confined to 119 uh, research paper. And uh, then she went on reading uh, the abstract of those papers and found that out of those 119 papers, almost 40 papers, they only focused on uh, review of literature. They only focused on conceptual studies, etc. No empirical study, no study with the help of primary data, etc. were taken up. So after reading the abstract, 40 of those papers, which were only conceptual in nature and which is restricted to literature review only, they were discarded. So out of 119, only 79 papers were finally retained uh, for the ultimate analysis. And uh, Josephine Chomba tried to analyze that from the possible point of integrations, what does this, these papers use, actually? Now, the results were very interesting. So the results were 62% of the integration took place at the design level. OK, so all those papers, out of 585, only the usable papers, so out of 79 papers, 62% of the papers, the point of integration was at the design level. 24% of that particular uh, point of integration was at the interpretational level. 13% was at the data collection level. And interestingly, Chomba found only 1% of the uh, you know, uh, study which has used a little bit of integration at the analytical level, that too in a very crude manner. So 62% majority at the design levels, 24% at the interpretational level, 13% at the data collection level. Now, to a large extent, that's why I was telling you at the beginning that one of the major criticisms of uh, Big method research in the later part of, uh, in the second decade of, of the 21st century, it started from 2010, 11, 12, and the notion continued up to 2020, one of the major criticisms of the mixed method was mixed method was not actually mixing anything. And when the researchers came out with this, with this, with this particular view that the mixed method is not, uh, you know, ensuring mixing, what actually they meant, they said that actually it is not uh, ensuring mix of the data or at the at the analytical level so we 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 are not seeing that the analytical techniques are cross applied 
okay cross application of the analytical techniques it, it, it is not not taking place so we we uh, in, in in 2013 2014 most of the researchers came out particularly in um, two of the researchers i will mention one is anthony on wigbusi and the second one is john hopkins they came out with a paper in the journal of mixed method research published by sage in 2015 whereby they said that these horizontal data analysis will not ensure point of integration at the analytical level because what these mixed method researchers are adopting is a horizontal data analysis now what is actually horizontal data analysis horizontal data analysis means that two analytical processes are taking place concurrently without intersectionality between each other so qualitative techniques are applied on qualitative data quantitative techniques are applied on quantitative data and only at the interpretational or inferential level the outputs are you know collected and are collated so intersectionality is only ensured at the interpretational or the inferential level so in 2015 you know on big busy and hopkins came out with a seminal concept of you know vertical data analysis which we will be uh, focusing on later which uh, you know conceptually they said that in a vertical data analysis irrespective of the structure of the data irrespective of the nature of the data uh, analytical techniques has to be applied to ensure proper mixing and to ensure the intersectionality otherwise you know it is only a, like a standalone process so that 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 is one of the issues uh, which 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 point of integration is one of the most important primary uh, dimension for the mixed method research but while at the design level at the data collection level at the inferential level point of integration has been ensured and as it is revealed uh, through the plethora of papers or the proliferation of papers or the research outputs that we see that we have seen but it was not until 2021 22 that we have seen the intersectionality or the point of integration at the analytical level so in near future uh, what we will be seeing is more integration at the analytical level rather than at the design methodical paradigmatic level data collection level because these were already achieved okay uh, the next one is the design typology utilization there are different kinds of designs uh, that can be churned out uh, when applying the, or adopting an application of the mixed method research uh, we can have convergent parallel design we have explanatory sequential we have exploratory sequential design we can have nested design or embedded design transformative design we have multi-phase design these 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 require a lot of time for explanation for each of these particular design but if we can actually identify some of the descriptors like for example uh, you see uh, you uh, you just um, uh, focus on the notation part because if you focus on the notation part you will be understanding uh, the theoretical drive used in this particular design so in uh, the first one you see qual plus quan qual is denoted uh, in all caps that means in the upper case and quan has been uh, represented with all lower case so how can we describe this particular design this is an inductive simultaneous design what is why it is an inductive why why is it inductive it is inductive because you see the core of the theoretical drive is the qualitative method and we all know that the qualitative method basically focuses or harnesses the inductive it, it, it propagates through the inductive approach okay so it is inductive simultaneous design it is not sequential the plus sign that means it is concurrently taking place both the qualitative and the quantitative method so if we are using arrow as it has taken place in the second uh, example qual two quan that is inductive sequential design where the core component is the qualitative as it is represented in all upper case and the supplemental component is quantitative represented in the or lower case so if we reverse uh, example number one in example number three from an inductive simultaneous design it becomes a deductive simultaneous design because here in the third example 
the quantitative method becomes the theoretical drive the quantitative method becomes the core and the qualitative method becomes the supplemental to this entire mixed method application then we can have another example like deductive sequential design we can have equal status design you see five and six are very important five and six both the methods are represented with the help of upper cases that means both are core so according to jennifer green's concept of equal status that i am as a researcher i am assigning equal you know uh, weightage both on the quantitative and the qualitative method although it is sequential in nature it can be concurrent also if i represent one in uppercase qual in uppercase and if i place a plus sign in between them that means it is concurrent equal status design so there can be a number of designs depending on uh, what the researcher is trying, uh, what, what, what kind of research problem the researcher has formulated for himself or herself, to what extent the problem is very complex, and to what extent the problem requires uh, which one will be the core, which one will be the supplemental, or if there is at all a uh, bifurcation between the core and the supplemental, or if the researcher feels, okay, I need to, uh, you know, assign or assume equal status for both these two mono methods it is all the researchers understanding uh, about the research problem okay so these are some of the designs we we also have seen the embedded designs also or the nested designs you see um, okay we will come to this later the example so there are certain uh, you know uh, design which was uh, which were proposed and formulated by johnson and christensen in 2017 you can see all these things we have already uh, described you just whenever you are writing a paper or whenever you are using mixed method or your uh, you know researchers who are working under you they are using uh, the mixed method mm, they must be very careful about writing these notations because uh, these upper cases and lower cases in the mixed method dictionary or in the mixed method lexicon, they carry a specific meaning. So if I find as an examiner, all is written in uh, caps or all is written in lower case, immediately I will try to interpret in, in uh, according to that dictionary. Okay, and the use of the plus sign and the arrow signs, etc. So, if, if you should be very careful, one should be very careful, a researcher should be very careful uh, with these particular notations. <clears throat> uh, the sixth dimension for this uh, uh, mixed method uh, application or mixed method research is the typological versus interactive approaches to the mixed designs. Okay. Now, typological or the taxonomic approach, and the second one is the interactive approach. You see, uh, in case of the typological or taxonomic approach, the approach is the research design is prepared as a mold. Okay, it, it is almost like a mold, and the entire inquiry process is fit into that. So it is almost like a forced fit. Okay. So the research design or the design of that particular research is not very flexible. It is almost like a rigid mold and you are actually forcing uh, the inquiry system to fit into that. That's, that's not desirable uh, always. And you will find a lot of you know, uh, you know, research issues or research problem which apparently requires a degree of flexibility when you are actually designing it. So when uh, uh, two uh, social scientists, so one is Maxwell and second one is Loomis, Maxwell and Loomis in 2003 came out with an alternative approach to this typological or taxonomic approach, which was uh, prevailing uh, during that particular point of time. They came out an, with an approach which is called an interactive approach. Okay, so by virtue of this uh, particular interactive approach, they said, uh, that in an interactive approach, there are five integrated areas. So they started with goal, uh, then the conceptual framework, research question, methods, analysis, and validation. Oh, sorry, six uh, six articulated uh, you, you can say steps. And they said here, uh, design is not a mold. Here, the design is focusing on a process. 
and you are supposed to get design as a product as an output so design as a product is not an input in in case of a typological or taxonomic approach design as a product was an input why design as a product was an input because what what you did you prepared a mold you prepared almost a rigid framework in which your mode of inquiries should fit so it was more as an input design as a product as an input but in case of an interactive approach design as a product was not the input rather the design as a product was an output to what to design as a process so maxwell and loomis uh, said that there are you know six steps in the entire design process which are interactive that means they are interacted with you cannot take out one single step and study it in isolation they actually um, you know proposed a hexagonal model with these six steps and that particular hexagonal model if you see you will find that all the steps are interacting with each other so when you are setting a goal uh, for you you are connecting it with conceptual framework you are connecting it with the method you are connecting it with the data uh, collection protocol with the data analysis regime and then the validation process so if the entire thing is well needed that means here the design is an interactive process and what comes out of this process is design as a product okay which was not there in case of you know uh, typological or uh, taxonomic approach uh, the seventh dimension primary dimension for the mixed method research is the planned versus you know uh, emergent designs what is a planned design planned design means uh, from the onset of the research problem that means the uh, time from which the researcher has devised a research problem or conceptualized a research problem he or she has already in her mind or his mind that uh, he or she will be applying a mixed method or the formulation of the problem has been done in such a manner so that it becomes the best premise for implementation of the mixed method research so it is a planned one so the formulation of the research problem is planned for the implementation of the mixed method research if i contradict this or if i you know contrast this to the other possible possibility that the researcher is very unsure to start with that uh, with regard to the research problem that he or she has formulated which method will best find out a solution to this uh, particular research problem or which method will find out the best possible answers to the research questions that he or she has framed in the process of the research as he or she proceeds with the research then he or she finds or the researcher finds that okay a single method or a mono method application won't be able to justify the research problem or find out answer to the research question so as he or she digs deep the researcher digs deep into the research uh, phenomena then possibly at a point of time the researcher will feel that they require both the methods either one is a dominant one is a supportive or equal status uh, to address uh, the research problem so these are the emergent decision designs emergent designs are designs which are not pre-planned that means they are they are not very stereotypical routinized designs but they emerge as the research progresses whereas in a very pre-planned kind of uh, uh, of a research design you you can you can you can uh, you know formulate the research problem in such a way so that it becomes a premise for the implementation of the mixed method approach and both these kind of approach both these kind of designs are being observed because as we go through the research papers uh, we see uh, that both the planned and the emergent designs are there but more or less we find that the people who the researchers who are actually formulating the research problem in such a way is uh, that it, it becomes a well designated hub to implement the uh, mixed method applications okay so this is the uh, dimension number seven then we have dimensions of complexity 
uh, dimensions of complexity basically addresses to the fact that mixed method research is although we have said it is it, it, it is basically addressing the complex issues of the research problem the research problem essentially which are very complicated in nature okay uh, you know there is a um, concept of multi-level mixed design what is a multi-level mixed design say for example when you are taking data or when a researcher is trying to have data not only from different populations or different communities but also from the different levels in those communities then the texture of that particular data and the requirement or the protocols of the analytical uh, processes to be implemented on those data it becomes really complicated and very critical say for example that i am not only interested to have data from the organizations but also from its employees okay uh, as a researcher i am not only interested to generate data from the households but from the family or from the individuals of those households also I am not only uh, interested to generate the data from the educational institutes, but also interested to generate data from the teachers and the students also. So if, if you, I'm not only uh, interested to generate data from a particular community, but from the community members also. If, if my data is coming from multiple levels, then probably the complexity of that particular data uh the texture of that particular data and the associated criticalities of mixing the method particularly the point of integration with respect to analysis etc it changes I, I can give you a particular example say a researcher is interested to do a research on crime okay now a crime has multiple embeddings. It has social embedding, it has political embedding, it has economic embedding, to a certain extent it has cultural embedding, it might have cultural embedding also. So a particular social phenomena, if it is having multiple embeddings, the data are emanating from these multiple uh, areas and they are of you know various nature or the, and they are of you know um, not only uh, various nature they 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 refer to uh, you know varying degree of complexity so crime when it is uh, you know uh, when it, when it is when the researcher is trying to understand crime from the context of economic complexity it will churn out a different kind of a data when the researcher is trying to understand crime from the social uh, perspective it will have different kind of a data from you know uh, political uh, perspective it will have a different kind of a data to assimilate and collate all those data uh, it, it, it is a big challenge so the dimension of complexity in case of a mixed method research particularly if a research is carried on the ground of say multiple embeddings and multiple levels uh, from where the data is generated uh, then probably it, the complexity reaches its uh, you know ex extreme height. But we have multi-level mixed designs. So we have multi-level mixed designs uh, uh, proposed by uh, Nigel Felding. Uh, we have multi-level mixed design which was uh, proposed by uh, Anthony Onwek Busi and John Hitchcock. We have multi-level mixed designs which were proposed by Jennifer Green. So we have the frameworks in place. So we, we, we can follow this framework, but as I have told you, these frameworks are still in the developmental phase. So, so over the next few years, probably we will see uh, more and more of this. Okay, so this, this, this is the dimension of complexity. So these are basically the eight dimensions of, of uh, primary dimensions of, of uh, mixed method research. There are certain secondary dimensions uh, for the mixed method research which can be considered for designing purpose, the mixed method designing purpose, like the phenomena under study, the social scientific theory, which is basically the epistemological connect to the ontological pos uh, posit, which the researcher has framed, um, the ideological drive uh, behind the design, a uh, combination of the sampling methods, you know one of the issues uh, that uh, one of one of the questions that is often asked uh, in the mixed method 
is uh, whether you know uh, whether we should go ahead with the same sample while applying both the methods qualitative and quantitative with a single sample or whether there should be multiple number of samples or at least two different samples for two different type of uh, you know method application or uh, there is another question which is asked if there is a sample imbalance then how to deal with those sample imbalance because in most of the cases when a researcher goes for at least two different sample uh, for the application of qualitative and the quantitative method I have seen a number of researchers coming out with a problem that there is a sample imbalance when there are two different samples. So there can be demographical imbalance, say, for example, in a sample of 50 or 100, there, say, in a sample of 50, there are 38 males and 12 females. Okay, so when we are going for uh, analytical process, and if we are trying to fit in a model with the help of that particular sample, by using a software by, or by using a machine tool, uh, application tool, you will find that most of the softwares, when they're modeling and when they're churning out a predictive model, they, they actually focus on the majority part of the sample and undermining the minority part. So we will find if, if, if there is a sample imbalance, in this case, I have said that uh, in a sample size of 50, if there are 38 males and 12 females, and if I run a model, predictive model, and the model will assume the majority and the entire model will be based on 38 males rather than 12 females. So at the end of the analysis, when I get the model, if I try to generalize the model over a wider, pop broader population, uh, then you know, uh, in a way, it will not be a very justified kind of a model because, you know, the model in itself is very skewed. OK, for example, in case of a machine learning, we are using the machine learning to churn out the predictive models these days, particularly for this, you know, uh, mixed method application, particularly data analysis with regard to mixed method application. We are using machine learning and machine learning is having one, uh, you know, problem and that is, it is heavily skewed towards the majority, uh, you know, uh, sample rather than on the minority sample. So if there is a huge sample imbalance, stark sample and sample imbalance, then the model will be churned out on the basis of the majority part, leaving out the minority part. So it will be very difficult for the researcher to generalize and transfer that model over a wider population. But we have solutions to that also. And the machine learning in itself has brought uh, the solution. We can take a look at uh, those solutions later. Uh, next is degree to which the research participants will be similar or different. It is connected with uh, the sampling method. If you are using two different samples, it depends on, you see, everything depends on what kind of research problem you have formulated. And if your research problem it, it, it hints uh, you or it, it actually uh, tells you that I, it requires two different kind of sample uh, for, for addressing or for comprehending the research problem in, in totality, then probably your research participants will be different when you are going for two different kind of methods. Implementation setting is a big issue in, in case of mixed method research, degree to which the methods similar or different the validity criteria and strategies which are starkly different in two different kind of methods uh, so these are some of the secondary design considerations uh, in addition to the primary designs so in case of the primary designs we have seen that the theoretical drive is very important the timing the simultaneity and uh, uh, dependence is very important uh, we have seen the typology uh, is very uh, model construction that's very important and uh, uh these dimensions of complexity typological versus interactive approaches to design these considerations like planned versus emergent designs uh, design typologies etc so these these uh, uh, apart from these primary uh you know dimensions of mmr this set of secondary uh dimensions for the design consideration uh, is always uh, taken into consideration now to uh, have a certain understanding about uh, mixed method research uh, where is it moving that means in which direction it is going and uh, what we can uh, actually 
expect in future and uh, what the mixed method research as a method itself um, rather than focusing on the application part um, a big pool of researcher is actually trying to mix method is, is trying to ensure that mixed method research emerge as a foolproof research method and it emerge as a third potent you know research method apart from the qualitative and the quantitative method which are which are already in place so where is it moving or what are the three i i, I will point out to three most in, interesting and important uh, areas which which are uh, now under consideration or uh, on which the works are going on uh, the first one is basically related to the standardization uh, the methodology, uh, the, the, the monitoring of the methodology and the standardization of the process. So moving towards, uh, you can say, a unified network or uh, a unified model uh, for the mixed method. So a relatively, you know, a large proportion of this mixed method research, uh, if, we, if we see the literature to a certain extent, whatever literature has come out, is devoted to the classification of this mixed method design and these classifications if we look into their classification these classifications are based on uh, identifying the typology so we have john cresswell he identified eight typologies jennifer green he she came out with the 15 typologies on wick busi and leach in the year 2003 came out with 35 typologies then Nastasia, they, uh, he came out with uh, uh, 15 typologies. And uh, in, in the later half, all the researchers came out with the meta typologies based on the typologies that we have already seen. Some of the typologies we have already discussed, isn't it? Uh, the research design, MMR designs and typologies, etc. So uh, it, it, it has not consolidated yet in, in terms of standardization of the mixed method design. Uh, the typology standardization is yet to take place. So in near future, probably we will find uh, that more and more work will be in this area, you know, uh, to build up a proper schema and manual for the mixed method research, particularly from the design perspective. And standardize the, as, a, as, a, as a result of which, since nothing has consolidated, there is no benchmarking, there is no, you know, standardization of things. Uh, we are finding a very interesting plight between full autonomy and heteronomy as far as application of the mixed method research is concerned. So researchers are either going for one extreme where we see the concept of theoretical drive uh, being you know implemented to the other extreme where we see the equal status norm is being implemented so uh, it's it's still in the process of you know uh, in the process of settling down so these standardization norms are something that we are looking forward to the next issue which is a very critical thing which is the role of epistemology in the mixed method design now you, you see uh, at the core of the mixed method research approach we find uh, that the methods are seen as unproblematic representation of different epistemological stances okay so let me just uh, repeat this you know if you if you see the core of mmr that means the core of the mixed method research what, what is at the core of the mixed method research when you when we are mixing methods it is not only at the methodical level where the mixing is taking place you are actually when when i'm mixing qualitative and quantitative method and there are multiple point of integration it is not only the method that gets mixed only I am mixing methods, that means I am integrating the paradigms also. I am integrating positivism with constructivism. And each of these paradigms are having multiple number of implications when we go back to their epistemological spread. So at the core of this mixed method research approach, we find that the methods are seen as, uh, you can say, unproblematic representation to their epistemological connect. So we cannot actually ignore the, you know, uh, existence of diversified kind of epistemology. 
uh, that is uh, that that is taken into consideration when we are actually applying the mixed method so what is the fundamental challenge over here the methods needs to be disengaged from you know too strict an epistemological uh, interpretation if if i really want to ensure uh, mixing of the method uh, which when when i am doing so uh, the mixing of the methods i am this is almost taken for granted that the paradigms are mis mixed and the epistemologies are also mixed up but you know methods needs to be actually if i if i want to uh, apply a proper mixing norms uh, for when, when the methods are being mixed the methods must be disengaged from its strict interpretation in the epistemological context okay now if i if i become too rigid if i stay as a researcher too rigid uh, in terms of method and their uh, epistemological rootedness then probably the mixing will be a forced one okay uh, we said that the mmr or the mixed method research design should be more flexible but nowadays we are hearing a new term it should be more mixable rather than flexible because when it um, flexibility doesn't offer enough flexibility in terms of breaking down the epistemological core of these methods mixability actually uh, you know addresses so that the methods are disengaged from the strict and rigorous interpretation from their epistemological connect so that has to be done uh, the the frameworks ha has to be very much mixable rather than uh, you know flexible uh, and the third thing that we are that we are finding the third thing is basically uh, a combination of these first two one is uh, you know uh, the search for standardization so search for consolidation and how to de disengage the method from their ep epistemological rootedness now these two things when we are uh, you know uh, pursuing the researchers are pursuing these two things that means in search of standardization and disconnectivity with the epistemological uh, uh, issue now we are ending up with a particular thing uh, which in uh, which in terms of brian latour is called uh, the black box effect okay now the black box methods and how to open them this 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 will be the new challenge for all those uh, mixed method researchers in the near future because you know a black box is is a kind of entrapment uh, in the pursuit of standardization it's very difficult to standardize uh, a, 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 a mixed method whereby multiple paradigms are there, multiple methods are there, multi-level data assimilations are there, multiple number of data analysis protocols are there. So a group of researchers is continuously asking this question when we are moving from a concept of singularity to plurality, can standardization and consolidation be possible? Because, you know, if we if we standardize, then it has to be a standardized across these multiple levels of issues related to you know methods related to paradigms related to data collection protocols analysis inference etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, this is one and to the extent which these methods are connected with their individual epistemology so how to unbox this we we in the in the process of standardization and disengagement of methods with their epistemological root, we have been trapped into something which is called a black box. So um, in future, uh, the mixed method researchers will be much more interested uh, to find out uh, methods and means uh, to unbox these uh, particular things. So we are looking into these things and uh, we are sure that we will be heading towards uh, more uh, you know, differentiated, more, uh, you can say, uh, properly identified and more normed kind of a mixed method regime, what we are uh, following today. But with the kind of, uh, you know, uh, work that is taking place over the, over the, over the years, um, I'm sure that these three methods, uh, these three issues will be uh, 
uh, will be addressed okay so um, in near future we will be seeing these uh, more and more research will be taken up apart from application this what i have said is not from the application point of view from the application point of view ex exactly what we are seeing now i've uh, shown you at the very beginning that from 2006 onwards till now i have only data of up to 2017 uh, so up to 2017 we have seen exponential growth in the application of the mixed method research this is one issue the application the adaptation of mixed method as the third method in the research process but there will be a considerable focus in the development and uh, you know uh, purifying the method itself so this is with regard to that purification and standardization of the method and the hidden agendas and the hidden issues uh, that that lie uh, in the mixing of these two methods see as i have told you that in, in the 18th century 19th century also we have seen this random application of different methods in a single study so we, we used to call them you know combination of methods or combined methods so during that time also these combinations were there but they were used very randomly very discreetly and uh, with without any uh, without the sense of a logical design in place but you know the more we are exploring the mixed method research more complexity or more complex issues are coming uh, coming through and uh, the researchers are engaged in uh, you know you know addressing these complex issues and purifying the mixed method as as a, as a research tool so this this is all about the uh, emergence of the mixed method research so uh, if you have any question you can ask or alternatively what we can do is uh, we can go for the second session and after that we can uh, engage ourselves in a uh, discussion Hello, sir. Uh, I am I audible? Hello, sir. If you have any question, you can ask, or otherwise, uh, after taking a short break, we can move to the second session. Sir, am I audible? Hello. Yes, yes. Please. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I had a uh, question. Actually, recently I came across a study method which is uh, an integration of grounded theory and case study. It's being called the grounded case method, mostly used in qualitative uh, research. Now, if, uh, for example, as you said, development of a scale, if I need an attitude analysis of the participants and I'm using uh, it quantitatively through skills like the NEP scale, etc., if I use such kind of a study design, will that be considered a mixed method uh, study design? So am I audible? I don't think uh, sir can hear actually. I think uh, Arup sir uh, did not uh, hear the question. No, he is not. Hello sir. Yes, yes, he is not listening. At least you are visible to us. Arup sir. Am I audible? You are audible, sir. But I think we are not audible. I can't hear anybody. So I think he got muted. He has muted him. I think he has muted his laptop. Sir, you are muted. So, text phone, sir. Sir. I am not muted. 
then of course he's not muted because we can listen to him yes. but he can't listen just a minute i am calling maybe you can put your question on chat if okay if there are certain questions you can uh, type it out in the chat box if uh, so that we can actually hello so can you listen hello ami pachhi na ashchorjo ha ha ami just ekটু baire giye korchi Yes, I communicated to sir that uh, once he disconnected and again joined, then yes. Sir, am I audible? You are audible to us, but not to the sir. No, I'll just join back. Yeah. Oh, he is not listening. Yeah. still not so then i can ask in the second half maybe yeah. mm. that is the problem remains the same until it resolved so am i audible now yes sir yeah i you are also audible yes sir i'm audible sir yeah, yeah please do good afternoon sir i had a question i recently came across uh, a design which is being called grounded case method where grounded study and the case study both these methods are being uh, amalgamated and i as okay. far as i know i've just started my journey as a scholar actually so i know very little Uh, i as far as i know both these things are mostly used in qualitative uh, designs although right. we can also use certain quantitative elements in them now sir if mm. uh, in if i am trying to follow a grounded case method uh, uh, mm. and i am also using as you said certain skills especially attitude mm. analysis skills like the new environmental paradigm skill or something like that mm -hmm. and i am amalgamating them uh, logically mm. then that, will that be considered a mixed method uh, study design now let me first understand you are using an existing you try, are you trying to develop a scale or you are trying to use uh, an existing scale the no, scale sir, you have said it already it's an exists. existing scale yes sir okay so what actually you are trying to do you are you tell me the objective what what you want to do sir actually mine uh, what i intend to do is a case study uh based okay. on uh, certain environmental uh, awareness and advocacy campaigns which are also okay. related to adoption of certain agricultural practices so it is a mm. mixture of developmental and environmental communication in one study mm. design which will be based on uh, certain case studies but there mm -hmm. is not much data to actually make it deductive so it's mostly going through comparisons so as far as as i know this is certain uh, something which is placed in a grounded theory approach we have to compare data and arrive at uh, certain uh, theoretical frameworks but it is through mm. a case study because i'm uh, studying and describing and exploring the whole thing through a case study of certain okay. environmental campaigns that are going on right now uh, okay. but i also might need certain uh, attitudinal skills like the non new environmental paradigm skill or the eco eco spirituality skill which are already existing in certain research as i found mm. in a few papers so if i through interviews i'm trying to uh, arrive at uh, uh, the uh, attitude of the farmers but i'm also trying mm. to make it quantitative through the use of the skills in that case will okay. will that be a mixed method or see in in case of uh, mixed method approach particularly if you are uh, if a researcher is using uh say i start with a uh, qualitative was uh, say if i start with a quantitative process i have applied a uh, scale uh, say an existing scale as in your case and i have collected uh, data scale data 
I have analyzed the scale data with the help of uh, appropriate uh, statistical process and I have got certain results. And uh, what I can do is on the basis of these results or using these results or using the qualitative method, I can further explain these results that are coming out of the quantitative studies. This is one way of doing it. So it will be a sequential one. You start with a, a quantitative method, uh, apply the scale, uh, generate the data, analyze the data, and the findings can be uh, expanded or findings can be uh, explained and illustrated with the help of the qualitative uh, understanding or the qualitative approach. The second thing is, OK, uh, let me apply the scale, let me generate the data, let me apply the appropriate statistical process and uh, the results. Okay, this is uh, what I have got in the quantitative uh, result. Let me now apply the qualitative uh, method with, with, with an objective that for the quantitative part, this was my objective. I am using qualitative part for this particular objective. And this will be a concurrent application, simultaneous application of both the quantitative and the qualitative part. At the inferential level or the interpretational level, the outputs of the results from both these two methods have to be integrated so that you know your research problem uh, or the set of research questions or the research objectives that you have set for yourself, that can be best addressed by uh, the use of the results coming out from these two methods. In that case, yes, it is a justified one because you see, either of those five protocols have to be uh, used as a ground to apply the mixed method. Either it has to be triangulation where further clarifications are required or complementarity, uh, one will lead to the other or the development. In this case, the development uh, justification is not there. That's why I asked whether it is a new scale or an existing scale. If you want to develop something new, uh, then the development justification will come. Initiation, it may come if you are getting two, diverge, two different kind of a result from the application of two uh, different kind of methods. And if it is so, then with the logic, with understanding, with uh, your own intellect, you have to bridge these two things. Why two divergent kind of results are coming out? Or it can be you know, uh, used as an explanation to uh, that the mode of inquiry will be much you know, broader, much, it will have much depth. But in, in your case, the justification will be triangulation because you want clarification. Probably you want clarification or complementarity. If you are using uh, this uh, sequential design, then complementarity will be an issue, uh, will be the justification. If you are using concurrent design, mixed method concurrent design, then uh, this triangulation will be the uh, justification. Yes, you can do that, uh, but as I have told you, everything, uh, whatever uh, uh, you know, research design you are proposing, that has to follow uh, a very well, you know, logical sequence. That I am using this both the methods because my problem statement requires the support of both these mono methods together. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. So Dada, we can take a break over here, then we can yes. proceed we, with the second session. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when we return? Uh, at around 4.30, uh, 4.45, say. OK, fine. Hmm. Quarter to five. Definitely. 